everything you do leading up to the night of the fight is what determines whether you win or not. And so, you know, in a lot of ways, the fight is won or lost in the lead up to the actual fight. And this is the same way, you know, the election is won or lost in all the months of hard work that, that we've been doing on the campaign. As a mixed martial arts fighter, Sharice Davids knows how to land a blow. But nothing could have quite prepared her for this new battleground. For the first time, she's running for Congress. For Sharice and many other women, it all began a year ago, on the largest single day of protest in American history. We're still here. We have our own voices. We have our own power. And we're going to start exercising that. United in their opposition to President Trump, millions of women pounded the streets. Since then, those marching have sought to reshape the political landscape of this country, trying to turn a moment into a movement by encouraging women to take back the fight to their own communities. So just where is all this heading? Across America, women have become galvanized into running for office. Many of them have never done so before. And they're starting to find some success. Take the House, for example. In states where primaries have already been held, double the number of women are receiving nominations compared to 2016. Take one. I want to represent this community in Washington, D.C. Take the power into your own hands. I am ready and up for the job. I wanted to fly fighter jets. This is my new mission. <laughs> Democracy only works when we all get involved. More than ever before, they're diverse in background and in the issues they champion. My name is Feru Saad. I'm running for Congress in Michigan's 11th Congressional District. Born and raised in Michigan, Vince Feru. her parents came to America from Lebanon um, so and for years have run a meat market in the state. I'm running on the Democratic ticket, obviously. Feruz went on to work in Homeland Security under Obama. That's so true. Now she could end up becoming one of the first Arab-American and Muslim congresswomen. Congrats on being a first-time voter. But first, she has to win a primary. Then she'd need to win back the district for the Democrats. If you're not at the table, you're on the menu. I think women are seeing that now. You know, we saw it with the health care debate about a year ago, for example. Twelve men got in a room and made decisions about what health care should look like for an entire country, of which 51 to 52 percent is women. But the truth is that there are many, many women in this country who voted for Donald Trump. What do you feel about that? Well, so the other day, I, I was going door to door, and I knocked on a woman's door. She was uh, an Obama, Obama, Trump voter. I asked her, you know, what took you from voting from Obama to Trump? And very simply what she said to me is I wanted to see change. And so that's really where my focus is on, um, is kind of bringing those people back into the electorate, bringing them back into the party. In Kansas, there's an even more difficult journey for Democrats. The state's third district was almost evenly split at the presidential election. I'm ready to get to work. Now they're trying to unseat its Republican congressman. But I have gone from being a used car dealer <laughs> to a lawyer, <laughs> and now I'm a politician. I don't know if I'm getting better or worse. <laughs> Sharice Davids faces a hotly contested seven-way primary. Truth is, I've had to fight my whole life. She's received backing from major donor Emily's List, which aims to elect more pro-choice Democratic women. We just need to fight for it. Are you ready? We're so often wondering who's going to do something about this. And I'm at a place now where I'm like, if I'm asking the question, that means I need to be part of the solution. So that was kind of the, the thing that pushed me internally. You could end up becoming the first Native American woman to make it to Congress. How do you feel about that role? For people who are descendants of the first inhabitants of this land to still be fighting to have some kind of representation in Congress, I think that says a lot about where we've been. And it also says a lot about where we're going. We're done waiting for other people to listen to us and to hear what we're saying. Do you think that a disconnect exists in this country then between the people who are currently lawmakers 
on voters. Things like being raised by a single parent, not an uncommon experience in this country, but the vast majority of people in Congress, frankly, come from similar backgrounds of privilege and access to, to great education. Hillary Clinton ran for office and proved that girls can be in charge. The end. But as we saw in 2016, the perception you're framing a campaign around being a woman <laughs> presents its own challenges. There are no women in statewide or federal office in Maryland. Just last month, former Michelle Obama advisor Krish Vignaraja attempted to gain the Democrats' nomination for governor of Maryland. I'm a mom, I'm a woman, and I want to be your next governor. You lost your Democratic primary. What do you think happened personally, and what do you think are the lessons for other women and perhaps the, the Democratic Party as a whole to learn? I realize that there are still a number of hurdles that women running face. Top at the, of the list um, is fundraising. Only 20 to 28 percent of political donations come from women. So what happens in states where men have strongholds is the endorsements end up being men supporting men. Um, and so that's where I think you see the difficulty of women trying to break into the old boys club. I wonder how you reflect on the fact that the majority of white women in America voted for Donald Trump. Part of it is women need to have an honest conversation um, amongst ourselves. There are still women who are our worst enemies. I had a w conversation with a woman who was a supporter who said to me, she said, look, over the holidays, I got your mailer. I saw that you have a young daughter, a baby, and so I can't support you anymore because I think you should drop out and take care of your daughter. Now, where do you want to go? To which I responded, look, I think I am taking care of my daughter by trying to do my part to help create a world that is better than the one she was born into. Which one do you want? Whether in Maryland, Thank you. Michigan, Kansas, or any other state. The path ahead for women running for the first time is by no means guaranteed. But even if they don't get elected, the very fact so many are trying to make their mark may help shift gender politics in America.